good evening and thank you for tuning in to another week that the Lord has made. And listen, it's, we're glad to be here on Can TV one more time. Uh, and we want to thank those who have made it possible. We want to thank Can TV. We want to thank our young people who are producing the show out there. Of course, we want to thank those who have journeyed with us throughout last year. Happy New Year to all of you and Happy New You. And so we hope that all of you are resting peacefully, that you are living your best lives and that you're doing the best that you can to help those who are less fortunate. And so this week, we we're going to kick off this first of 13 weeks of programming and where we're going to be talking to various different stakeholders in our community who have labored in the vineyard, who have done the work, who continue to do the work, and who have committed their lives to empower those who are less fortunate. And so this evening, I'm going to introduce to some and present to others, none other than one of my friends, one of my mentors, one of our leaders and legends in our community, none other than Donald Dew. Now, Donald Dew, for some, you all that know him, you know that he's just a workaholic. He's a servant for social change. He's a man on the mission. He loves his community. He's committed to his community. You know, I think, you know, if you really believe in something, you just totally commit to it. And I believe that's what he does because he's just all in. Uh, and it's no halfway. It's all in or nothing. And he's all in with making sure that we improve the quality of life for folks on the west side of Chicago. Yes, he's the president and CEO of Habilitative Systems, Inc. And we're going to talk about some of the things that's going on on the west side of Chicago, some things that's going on with HSI. And then we also want you to view us, to call in, uh, you know, check, of course, the website and, and then call our agencies and get in touch with us and find out what we're doing and join some of our endeavors on the west side of Chicago. There's so much going on on the west side. But I just want you to know that you are watching Fathers Who Care. And Fathers Who Care is a non-for-profit social service agency on the west side of Chicago. And we want you to, if you have some young people who would like to get involved in some of the activities we're doing, just give us a call at 773-287-5821. Or you can log on to fatherswhocare.org, Facebook, Twitter, all that other good stuff. And bring your young people on out and give them something to do. I mean, there's always something to do for the young people on the west side of Chicago. And we want you to be actively involved in some of those changes. Listen, we want to also dispel some of those negative myths about men on the west side of Chicago, about us not being uh, compassionate. Uh, to what we're doing on the west side, not compassionate about our young people, not compassionate about our community. That's so far from the truth. But we want you to watch us tonight, hear what we're talking about, join the movement, get actively involved in some of the activities we're doing, be it uh, community organizing, youth leadership and development, uh, lock, drop my ink pen, bam, there it is, uh, youth leadership and development. I mean, so many things going on, community organizing, community collaborations, you name it, we got it going on. And so with that being said, again, thank you for tuning in to Fathers Who Care. Sit back, relax, enjoy the show, and let's do something uh, rather different this year. Let's collectively come together. Let's pool our best practice, our intellectual properties, our resources in our community, and do what we can to build up the west side of Chicago. The west side is of Chicago is so rich. I mean, if you just go around the west side, you'll see so many uh, historical sites all on the west side. But we need you to say that we're going to work together, that we're going to do what we can to improve the lives of those who are less fortunate, those who are indigent, those who are going through, those who might be a little mentally challenged, those who might be going through some ups and downs. We know that we can do it. But with that being said, I'm going to come back now again to my brother Donna Dew. As I said to you before, and he's the president and CEO of Habilitative Systems, Inc. on the west side of Chicago. And we're just going to start off from right there. So, Donald, I'm going to ask you a few little questions, and we're just going to exchange and have some fun, right. as we always do. Donald, you've been working in, in, in this business for so long. But I'm going to ask you something rather personal, if you don't mind. Who is Donald Do? Now, I know Donald is the president and CEO of HSI. I know that. Maybe the people know that. You should now. But who is Donald Do, and what is Donald Do's purpose for existing? Well, thank you. Um, really, thank you, Reverend Jones, for the opportunity to be on your show again this evening. Truly appreciate that. Well, bro, and um, that's what we do. I, I left up the yeah. good work that you continue to do on behalf of those that's fortunate. Mm -hmm. Truly appreciate all your efforts and uh, your servant leadership. So thank you so much. Likewise, likewise. Um, Donald Dew is the um, son 
uh, Binola Du and Willie M. Du Sr. Uh, mother is from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I'm right there, Louisiana, and dad was from a little place called Shuklock, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Shuklock. Uh, Shuklock, Mississippi. So they migrated to Chicago. They got married over on the south side in mm -hmm. uh, Corpus Christi Church. Uh, had three sons. Um, my older brother, Willie, my younger brother, Joe. Um, from those three sons, of course, uh, we all had children as well. And um, I'm currently uh, married um, to Kimberly. And um, hey, Kim, <laughs> I have to get I have to get a sister. Hello, all right. <laughs> and um, you know, Kim and I have been together a very, very long time. And um, I've been saying that Kimberly is my my wife for life. So absolutely, um, she's been a blessing to me. And um, to, together now, we have six children. Mm -hmm. uh, she had two sons and has two sons, then and a daughter, and so do I. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are the um, black version of the Brady Bunch now. Doing our thing. And that's a good thing. Uh, we, you know, I was born and raised on the uh, west side of Chicago. I grew up uh, not too far from the uh, old Chicago Stadium. I moved a little bit further west into the Austin community. Um, you know, and um, actually traveled. Um, you know, back and forth to go to school as I went to Lewis University in Romeoville and then mm -hmm. went on to graduate school at the Jane Addams College of Social Work. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, who is Donald Dew? Donald Dew is just a guy from the West Side, a uh, father who cares, uh, who's been trying to do his bit for the community Thank for, you for that over, over three decades. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing this job. Uh, and um, I just enjoy um, working with our people and serving our people. It's why I'm here. And, and I appreciate you too, Donald. Uh, I know we get so involved in the work that we do and we be always just moving just to do what we can because the work don't stop no. I mean when you really commit to this uh, and we are committed I mean anyone that know us know that I mean we just true to the call and, and that's all we do we just do the work and I think we 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 got it honestly all right because that's how we was groomed the folks that we socialize with our circle all the folks that we deal with are in that mindset that's yes. just what we do yes. so it, it speak for itself but tonight we want to talk about community empowerment we want to talk about collaborations we want to talk about empowering future leadership uh, future leaders and we we want to talk about some of the social ills that we're currently facing in our community. Uh, for instance, mental health, poor mental health, mm -hmm. uh, senseless violence, substance abuse, and, uh, and other things. But with that being said, I, I want to just come back, Donald. And, and you know, we've been pushing uh, you and I uh, and some others uh, with this Westside Behavioral Health Task Force, and we're trying to find its footing so that we can all just. Mm -hmm chime in where we are and do what we can to bring awareness and try to change the stigma of mental health. Uh, and, and so I, I want to ask you, what are some uh, behavioral mental health concerns that we are currently facing in the city of Chicago? Well, you know, uh, there there are so many. Um, and let me just first of all say that the um, COVID-19 uh, pandemic has had a disproportionate impact on African Americans um, in the city of Chicago, mm -hmm. um, there are more you know black folk dying uh, as a result of COVID nineteen than, than anyone else. Please get uh, vaccinated. It, Please. We, we are urging everyone to get vaccinated uh, and get tested on a regular basis because it is so critical that we take care of ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, you know when we think about the other challenges that are going on within the city, we are concerned that the rate of suicide is increasing among our youth. Uh, we're concerned that the rate of suicide is also increasing among the first responders. Uh, we've got more policemen and state policemen. We heard about that a month or so ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. State policemen right on Dan Ryan Expressway committing suicide. Young brother, mm -hmm. uh, who we knew, um, committed suicide. and. You know, these are the kinds of challenges and, you know, there's a, a multiple pandemics that are going on simultaneously mm -hmm. within our community. So, you know, you're looking at COVID, you're looking at the issues around mental illness, you're looking at poverty, you're looking at substance use disorders, you're looking at disabilities, um, people who have been challenged dramatically for generations, mm -hmm. you know, and when you think about what that means, I mean, for folks who have been traumatized for 100, 200, 300, 400 years, right. and children are still going through that traumatic experience. I mean, this is creating a formula for a lot of the challenges that we see today. Right. And so, you know, and so that's why I, I think it's really important that we really address uh, mental health, 
mental health illness or poor mental health because right now I think folks have this mentality that if they're talking about mental health then they must be crazy I mean that's so far from the truth I think you're crazy when you don't talk about it personally because I think we all are suffering from something as a result of all that's going on in our land be it COVID be it other pandemics be it other epidemics all that's going on really inadvertently has an effect on our mental stability and I think personally I can attest to uh, some of the, the issues and concerns you share because I've had family members only if you knew what I experienced from September to December last yeah. year I mean I just, it seemed like I was living in a funeral home all right mm -hmm. because so many of my relatives from the same family had transitioned for so many reasons but anyway Donald I want to come back specifically on this issue of mental health why why is there such a stigma associated with mental health and trying to get assistance in that area well, you know, no one wants to be uh, called crazy, you know, um, or or be the person with issues or um, chaotic and just not able to handle themselves. I mean, you know, we think about it, and even with you know our military and, and our policemen, um, there's this code that you ought to be fit for duty, you know, mm -hmm. and no one just again wants to be concerned uh, about you know being judged as crazy. What we've been emphasizing increasingly is that we want folks to be just concerned as concerned about their mental health as they are about their physical health. Absolutely. And that it is not anything that one needs to be ashamed of or concerned about or stigmatized by. Uh, just be aware of the fact that you can have a bad mood. You can have a thought that is not in your best interest. Um, you can have um, a situation where the imagination is, is, is not experienced by any limitation. You just really constantly um, uh, thinking about um, the, the pain that you're under, the frustration of it all, the hopelessness of your experience. And, and that's one of the key factors, Reverend, that we have to look at, um, the sense of hopelessness, this apathy uh, among our folk. A lot of our young folks don't think that they'll be able to live to, to be much older. So, you know, there's a, a sense that, you know, I'm going to get what I need to get right now. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, let's also think about the fact that, you know, so many of our men and women now increasingly are incarcerated um, so many of the children are left without the support we can also think about the fact that so many of our children are involved in the child welfare system involved in the juvenile justice system which subsequently means that they go right into the criminal justice system and you know again the question is well who's taking care of the children mm -hmm. you know during this recent holiday season I've been saying there's only one gift that I really want to see given to our children and that is the gift of protection and safety mm -hmm. that is what first of all, helps to really lift up their sense of well-being and mental health to know that they are protected. Well, if you're a child and you've experienced what they call an ACE or an adverse childhood experience, that mark, that impression is carried through life. And you're not going to necessarily seek out help because the help wasn't there when you needed it the most. As a child, when you were very, very vulnerable and unprotected and, and harmed and, and injured, and that pain is real and it's carried through other life cycles and if you don't get to a point where um, you get a chance to resolve some of those um, issues of youth or even a most recent trauma, then you carry that impression with you. And it's been said, I'm sure our audience has heard it said time and time again, that hurt people hurt people. Absolutely. Abuse people abuse people. Absolutely. And, and this pain is real. This, this pain, this suffering is real. Um, folks are in a very desperate condition. And I've been saying, Reverend, that desperate people will do desperate things. Absolutely. There's no question about it. Well, thank you, Donald. We want to thank Ebony for for uh, joining us. We want to thank Pamela. We want to thank Leroy. We want to th I thank all of you all. For, if I'm missing somebody, please, God bless you all anyway. Listen, you're talking. We're here with Father Suquet. And of course, we're talking with uh, Donald Dew, who's the president and CEO of Habilitative Systems, Inc. Uh, Donald, tell us about the Wellness Center. We, we've been talking about specifically uh, mental health. We've been talking about some of the other social ills and other issues that that we are currently facing in yes. the community. Of course, COVID is one. Uh, we've done a lot of good work uh, with, with the census in those days. And, and we're still doing good work with empowering our young people on the west side of Chicago and other things, trying to make sure that we bring needed resources and support. But we know that there's a, a facility at 4133 West Madison. The name of the facility is called West Side Community Triage and Wellness Center. What is that? 
You know, uh, Reverend, basically this uh, center was um, created um, by um, the Abilitative Systems, a partnership between Abilitative Systems and the Bible Right Behavioral uh, Health uh, Center, um, funded by um, Cook County. And um, about three and a half years ago, we um, ventured on this path. And the intent was to uh, really address um, the alarming increase in presence of um, African Americans within the Cook County Jail system. Uh, we wanted to deflect folk from Cook County Jail. We wanted to deflect folk from unnecessary emergency room visits. We wanted to deflect folks from unnecessary psychiatric institutionalization. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to give folk an opportunity 24 seven to come to a place to get the support that they would need and to be able to have a full and comprehensive assessment done to look at what's going on with the trauma, what's the etiology or the cause of the trauma and let's put into place some of the supports that would be necessary to keep folks from having to go to jail, go to the hospital, or in fact go into an institutionalized setting. So you're basically assessing some of the root causes that would yes. contribute to some of the yes. behavior that folks are experiencing. Absolutely. And, and you know, many times and the police are called for domestic violence um, uh, situations and mm -hmm. concerns. Uh, we know that the police have been working diligently to create more training and education for their officers mm -hmm. around mental health, uh, which is so uh, so critical. A buddy of mine uh, was a sergeant with the police department would always say that the call that he really did not like to respond to was a domestic violence call mm -hmm. because he just really didn't know what he was going to experience. Absolutely. You know, so there are issues in the home many times. Again, you know, folks are on edge. If folks are frustrated. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. There's issues around finance. There's issues around health. There's issues around now school. Let's look at what the parents are going through. Absolutely. The children are at home. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, some have to worry about child care. They can't go to work if they don't have the children accounted mm -hmm. for. If they leave the children at home alone, then you know what's going to happen. Potentially, they're charged with neglect, potentially abuse. And now they have to come to the attention of DCFS. Mm -hmm. So these multiple issues are compounded constantly. Well, you yeah. you, you know, uh, I'm up, just for a moment, uh, uh, HSI have been providing just uh, a, a myriad of different programs and, and services. And you all have a 24-hour crisis hotline uh, that folks, if they're needing some direct intervention and support, uh, can you share that number? Yes, and if you would, um, it's, it's on the screen. Should I share that with them? Uh, yes, it's 773-745-2663. Um, 773 Mm -hmm. And again, that's an opportunity for folks to call day or night if they're experiencing any uh, type of crisis or trauma. Uh, we are uh, funded also by the Illinois Department of Human Services uh, to provide um, um, crisis services. And we've been a participant in the calm line uh, operated uh, by the state, mm -hmm. trying to give folk resources 24-7. Uh, so again, um, they know that there are places that they can come to, mm -hmm. like the Triad Center. Right. Um, you know, we have mobile crisis um, resources now. Bobby Wright has a mobile crisis team that's going out. You know, we respond to situations where, you know, folks are exposed to violence and trauma. Mm -hmm. So we want our community to know you are not alone. You can call for help. You can call for support. 773-745-2620. That's the 24-hour crisis line. If you need additional support, please feel free to give uh, HSI a call. Also, there's another number at 773-261-2252 or just log on to www.habilitative.org www.habilitative.org for additional information about some of the services that are being provided at HSI. I mean, I, I really see a lot of the work that's going on. I see a, so, a, a real spirit of folks that, most of the folks that, that work with HSI, they, all of them, they have to come in with a spirit of service. It's yes. just the, it's just the spirit of the agency, and I, and I see it all the time. But I want to come back and ask you a question. Now you know we're currently dealing with with senseless violence in our community, and, and to some it it has just become the norm. You know, yes, folks yes, just have yes. have become insensitized, and they just go with the flow. I personally believe, Donald, that uh, this this plight that we're experiencing with violence in our community, I think it should be considered a public health. Uh, 
issue. What's your thought? Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, Commissioner Deere led the charge at the county board level uh, to get it um, identified as a um, public health crisis in Cook mm -hmm. County. And it is a crisis. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Dennis Deere. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, who's also uh, a commissioner. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so he led that charge and, you know, kudos to him and to all of his colleagues who voted overwhelmingly uh, to address this particular issue of violence within the city of Chicago. Okay. They also um, overwhelmingly um, passed another resolution um, around the mental health needs uh, mm -hmm. within Cook County. So the county is attuned, our state officials are attuned, our city officials are attuned. So here's the thing, and you know, Reverend uh, Willie T. Barrow used to always say this from Rainbow Park. She I, I, said, I apologize, Yes, but I, I, I'm gonna save you, all right? All right. Kim is watching. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kim. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I wasn't gonna let that go. Oh no! no. <laughs> I wasn't gonna let that one go. <laughs> oh, you know her, her energy and her partnership yeah. is, is um, the the women. You know, I was gonna take so. that. I was gonna take that moment. My no, friend. I appreciate that. I <laughs> yeah. truly appreciate it. But go ahead. Dude. But you know, um, Reverend uh, Willie. Um, um, bear over at uh, Rainbow Push yeah. often say that the challenge with you know our folk, our black folk is we're disconnected. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of fragmentation. And there's also a lot of fragmentation in the human service delivery system. So, you know, we often hear that, you know, folks are falling through the cracks. Well, right. Reverend, folks are not falling through the cracks. What's happening is that they're falling into another social service system. Um, they're falling into the homeless roles or mm -hmm. they're falling into the um, Cook County jail system or mm -hmm. they're falling into, you know, the disability ranks or you know heaven forbid they're you know at the coroner's office because now you know they experience death right. so we are at the point right now where we're saying you know all of these resources um, that we're providing you know we're not trying to be all things to all people Reverend we're just mm -hmm. trying to be responsive to intense community need absolutely let me ask you this Donna you're, you're part of so many in, in, uh, 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 organizations and collaborations and initiatives that's going on. I want to talk to you about a few of them and you just tell me your thoughts on it. Uh, what is the Chicago Westside Health Equity Collaborative? Yeah, so the Westside Health Equity uh, Collaborative, we, you know, basically came together as a result of funding, uh, funding made possible by um, our governor. Um, he funded the Illinois Department of Healthcare Family and Services to launch their health care transformation collaboratives. And, you know, basically this is to address health inequities within the state of Illinois. Um, again, um, we realize that uh, folks have not had always good access to care. We've been concerned that, for example, within uh, the city of Chicago, on the west side of Chicago in particular, mm -hmm. there's a 20-year differential uh, between folks living downtown and, and living on the west side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. You know, we, our health care partners are very concerned about mm -hmm. that. We're very concerned about that. You know, we've got too many health care facilities and behavioral health care facilities in and around the west side of Chicago for the mortality rate to be at the level that it is, you know, for people to be suffering at the levels that they are. You know, what we're trying to do is ensure that everybody understands that their support is, is, is that support is out there for them mm -hmm. and that they do not have to go unheard. Okay, absolutely. And so that's an initiative that, that's, that's being cultivated and being planet or, or, or get some foundation on the west side. Yes, and Good County Hospital is involved, the Loretto Hospital is involved, Rush University Medical Center, uh, Sinai, Humboldt Park Health, so it's a, uh, is it a, Access. Okay, you know, so the whole right. premise is to, to bring direct access to facilities, health care facilities. And to use an integrated health perspective, um, um, bring that perspective to the table. So okay. we're looking at chronic medical conditions. We mm -hmm. talked about hypertension, diabetes. We looked at severe mental illness, substance use disorder. Mm -hmm. We're looking at an integrated approach, working with healthcare partners to address these concerns. So, am I hearing correctly that this is a collaborative yes, of is. healthcare folks, health minded folks coming together? Yes to bring these resources, much needed resources, to the community. Reaching deeper and deeper into the community. That's what's happening. And, and in fact, uh, providing an opportunity for more community-based organizations uh, to be involved. Absolutely. And, um, you know, again, this is the type of partnership that ultimately works. And let me also just say this. Sure. Brother. You know, it is so important that this idea of race and health equity becomes a movement. You know, we want this to be a movement similar to our civil rights movements, uh, our women's rights movement, our disability rights movement. You know, all of these movements resulted in some significant legislation and ultimate change in the way systemically people were being treated. Mm -hmm. Now, you still have some individuals within all these systems who continue to do the wrong thing. 
no matter what policy is in place. Mm -hmm. But what we want to really get generated, similar to what we did with the census mm -hmm. in 2020, we brought together and mobilized this consortium, this collaboration. And we not only made sure that folks got counted, we made sure that we engaged in social determinants of health screenings. And we and were able fun. to- and, and, <laughs> Man, we had a ball. And, 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 and <laughs> a ball. you know as well as I do, yeah. folks were waiting in long lines for food, for personal protective equipment, but they were also getting information about Absolutely. needed services. Absolutely. And we were able, through that coalition of 30 members on eight community areas on the south side, another five community areas on the west side, yeah. we were able to get over 40,000 people referred to vital services. That's who right. Otherwise been in jail, otherwise been in the streets, otherwise been in the hospital. Again, it's the collaborative approach that well, I'm going to say to it flat out. I mean, I mean, you have uh, led that charge with the consensus, with the census, because and then you brought in and helped to bring in and was really we're, we're passionate about making sure everybody was on the same page. Yes. You were transparent. So everybody did get a chance. And those smaller organizations, grassroots organizations, you were training us and also uh, empowering us to take our agencies and the work that we're doing to another the level. I mean, it, it, I'll never forget it because it was so intense, but it was so much fun and it was, and it was a learning experience. <laughs> yes. When I say intense, you yes. know, I'm, I'm an intense guy. Yes, yes, you know, yes. I love what I do and I don't just do it to do it. I do it yes. for change, yes. for, for real systemic change. Yes. So, and I love it, you know, put me out there. I'm in it, you know, I'm gone, yes. you know. Yes. But anyway, let's go back to another question. Okay. What is the Behavioral Health Consortium? Uh, yes, um, Behavioral Health Consortium of Illinois. You're challenging. Uh, to share that particular group, yes. Okay. And, you know, what uh, is, and again, that's uh, 12 different organizations um, that come together who have um, a, a significant focus on um, the behavioral health needs, which mm -hmm. include, again, severe mental illness and substance use disorders. And I'm not going to name all the partners at this time, but what I will but say But you know is who you are. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and we thank you for being there. And we we absolutely thank yeah. you for being there. Yeah. Um, but again, this effort was funded um, by Cook County. And, um, you know, basically, uh, you know, they brought us together to, again, deal with the disproportionate representation of African Americans in the um, Cook County Jail who was suffering from mental illness. Mm -hmm. And we've heard Sheriff Dart say time and time again that his facility, the Cook County Jail, is the largest you know, mental health center in the country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're not talking about um, taking a punitive approach to folk in need, mm -hmm. in need of treatment. Folk need treatment. Absolutely. They don't need, you know, detainment. They don't need incarceration. They need treatment. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that, you know, county supported 100%. And now, you know, we've established with the county uh, what we're calling our behavioral health access line. So any Cook County patient that comes through that's suffering from uh, severe mental illness or substance use disorder condition, they are immediately connected to what we call a warm handoff mm -hmm. to one of our 12 agency partners. Thank you so much, Donald. You know how time flies when you're having fun. But, Donald, uh, we're, we're about at the end of this show. But would you share with us, uh, again, uh, why it's so important for folks to seek out the assistance that they need and not be afraid to, to get help? Uh, and then we got that hotline again, 773-745-2620. And if you need additional information, please call that hotline. And also uh, the, uh, the headquarters uh, for uh, HSI is 773-261-2252. So, Donna, give us a closing statement that would encourage some folks who are watching you. Well, again, uh, Reverend, thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, when it comes to mental illness, um, I've been emphasizing to everyone that I come in contact with that we should have mind over matter and we should understand that mind really does matter. Hmm. It's so important that we make good choices. It's so important that we can follow our own minds and our own thoughts of decisions. You know, for those folks in recovery, they often talk about the 12 steps and one day at a time. Well, I've been saying increasingly and intensively, it doesn't take a whole day to make a choice. All it takes is one moment, one moment in time. Let's master the moment. Let's master the moment. Let's think about the creativeness that we have within ourselves. Let's go on a 30-day mental diet. It's the beginning of a new year, 2022. Let's do you. Let's do you in 2022. And let's make sure that on this 30-day mental diet, the only thing that you cultivate in your mind, feel, are those thoughts that are necessary, beneficial, worthwhile, and totally uplifting to you and yours. Let's make a difference right now. Let's make this a community movement. Thank you so much. Now, that's why, thank you, Donald. And, and that's why it's important that you continue to tune in uh, to Fathers Who Care every week. It's important that you join our 
co uh, community stakeholders on the west side. It's so important that you join the collaborative. It's so important that you be about it and that you stop talking about it, but come on out and join forces with those of us who are out in the community laboring for you, your children, and our community. Listen, it's been... Uh, been, I usually say a stone guys, baby, but you know I don't want to <laughs> tell my age, but y'all right. know who it is. You know, but it's been fun, you know, as always, Donald, talking yes. with you. It's been fun sharing with you guys uh, uh, this evening and letting you know that we're still here. We're still doing the work, and I know some of you all may be experiencing some setbacks and maybe experiencing some trauma, some compassion fatigue. Hang on in there. You know, we're saying to you, we got resources coming to you. We got the support coming to you. We know what you're going through. We hear your call, and we're going to make sure that you have the support that you need and if you need us at fathers who care give us a call at 773-287-5821 773-287-5821 again that's the hotline number you heard uh, from hsi you had the office number there's no reason why you should not be getting some of the support you need and if you need some help give us a call and we'll direct you to some places that can help you so thank you so much and thank all of you all for tuning in we got kim saying hello to you don we got uh, uh, absolutely, she said. So there you go. Uh, and we want to thank you all for, for being with us this evening. And it looked like that thing was having a, a ball with us. But anyway, <laughs> good night. God bless you all. And we'll see you next time. God bless you and good night.